Hi, I'm Kristen from Upcycle My Stuff, and today um, I'm going to be talking about crumb piecing. So this is another one of my made fabric series, which is all about making fabrics from your scraps. Um, so if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, I'll try and link the playlist, and I'll definitely put the other video links in the description. Uh, but today we're going to talk about crumb piecing, or sometimes called crumb quilting. Um, but obviously you don't have to use this made fabric for quilts. You could use them for bags or anything. So uh, a, what's a crumb? <laughs> First of all, let's start with that. So a crumb is going to be different for different people. It's a small uh, scrap of fabric. So it can be a square. It can be a rectangle. Um, for some people, you would possibly call, um, you know, like an off cut, like a triangle like this, a crumb. Um, I do have a different video, um, which again, I'll link to, um, where I've made squares, what I call kind of scrappy squares or quilt blocks using this kind of like any kind of shape of scrap. Uh, and again, that you can just keep making the fabric bigger. It doesn't have to be for a quilt. Um, but for the purposes of the crumb quilting or uh, crumb piecing that I'm talking about today, I'm talking about squares and rectangle shape. It don't have to be exactly square or exactly rectangle, but more kind of straight edges um, and roughly these kind of straight. So if it was a little wonky, that's okay. But a straight triangle, I'm not using for this, if that makes sense. So I'll show you what I mean though. So uh, this is an example of traditional kind of crumb piecing, which is basically you take anything and everything and throw it together. I don't love the way this looks. I'm going to be honest. I like a bit of a color story to mine. So um, this is one still fairly random for me, to be honest. Um, greens and blues and a few other accent colors. I more do it things like this, where it's like more sort of it's mostly red and black. Um, this one is pink with some accents uh and i'm actually moving even away so even these are cr crazier quilting than um that i like to do i do like to have things even when they're scraps a little bit more color coordinated so this is the one that i'm going to show you making today so it's mostly white scraps i think i actually orientated this this way <laughs> anyway it doesn't matter it's a it's a crumb block um so it's mostly white and neutral scraps, and then I've just added pops of color. So I, I much prefer how that looks. That's my kind of style of um, scrappy sewing. So I made this one for, uh, I'm a member of a, a local quilt group and we're doing sort of block prompts. So uh, over a WhatsApp group, um, so each month somebody says uh, the theme is what, it, so the first one was like springtime. Uh, so everybody had to interpret that in a quilt block and this month was my turn and so I decided to do crumbs. So this was my my block that I made. So that's going to go with some other blocks uh, in my quilt and I'm sure I'll do a video when that's done and show you. <laughs> um, so but before I get started I will just show you, I'll do a fast forward and show you how I made this but I want to show you just roughly uh, how you start something like this. So Basically, I'm not going to give you a set size for how small or how big your crumbs um, can be because so, it's just basically uh, as small as you feel comfortable sewing a seam in and ironing. So here is one. So that one's obviously pretty thin. You can see the back. It was a very thin little cutoff. Uh, and all you're trying to do is sew along one edge. And if this this probably started out a little bit longer, sometimes they'll just match. That's great. Um, but you're just matching two pieces together and just growing and growing and growing. So, for example, here's another one that has a long one and a short one. So if I was going to join this one to this one, for argument's sake, I would hold this up here and go, Ooh, I'm missing. I need a piece here to make this seam long enough to match it here. So I'd need to find something else. So maybe I'd find this one, but then I'd have to lop off an edge, right? So we're just building and building. So you can kind of see how that works in here. So, so often I will do it in sections. So you'll see that in the video of the, the sort of neutral crumb block where I'm basically doing, so I would have made this in sections. So I would have started on one area and then another and then joined them together and then 
finally joined the whole thing together. So you can keep going and going and going. You could literally make a whole quilt like this or a whole big panel for a bag or a wall hanging or really anything you like. Um, so, but it is a, it is a great way of, like the scraps that I started with, some of these were really, really small. So it's definitely a great way of making use of some of your pretty fabrics that you only have a tiny bit of. Okay, so enough of me talking <laughs> and I will uh, show you how I put this together. I uh, hope you enjoy it. These are the scraps I started with. So I had a pile of whites and neutrals and a pile of colors. Uh, I didn't obviously end up using all of them, but that was my starting point. So what you'd see me doing here is um, picking out pieces. Um, so I picked out the yellow one and then I was trying to get enough small white ones to match. So I started with the really small crumbs um, because obviously you're going to want to add the longer bits as your piece gets a little bit bigger. So and you can also see that I am ironing between each time. You don't have to do that, you can finger press, but this is my sort of setup. So I have the quilting extension table um, on the edge there, one side, the left side, and on the other side I've got my pressing mat. So as I go and build up my little crumb piece, um, I'm trimming the edges to keep them somewhat straight. They're not 100% straight, but you know, uh, just enough so that I can attach the next piece of fabric. And then I'm ironing as I go. Uh, and I just find that's the easiest way for me. Obviously, if you want to speed up your crumb quilting, you can also uh, chain piece. So you could be doing several pieces at once and then cut them, you know, cut the threads apart and iron or finger press them then and move on. Um, but I kind of get into working on one piece at a time. It's just um, the way I like to do it, but it's definitely not the fastest way. So um, you can kind of do what works for you. So that was me when I was saying I was working on the block in sections. So you could see that yellow block and now I've started on yellow as in it had one little piece of yellow in it. <laughs> uh, now I'm starting on this, adding this section that's got a little bit of orange and I'm just measuring it up against the bit that I had before. Uh, and then I just keep adding and adding. So now that's getting added to the section that had a little bit of yellow in it uh, and then trimming and then I'll just keep on adding uh, more and more sections to make the piece bigger. And there you can see just off, it was just off camera in the left was the sort of left hand side of the block that I'd already done previously. And so I'm going, well, how much longer do I have to make this section in order for that to match up with the other section? So that's what I'm, when I'm holding things up against each other, that's what that's all about. Uh, and obviously as your piece gets bigger, you might add longer things like uh, that was just the end of a jelly roll with the clouds there. Um, and then I'm starting again, another little section here with a little crumb of purple. And it's just the same thing over and over again. You keep, as you start a new section, I usually would start again with those smaller crumbs to make up a bigger piece rather than starting with a bigger piece. Um, so that's what I'm doing here, making a small section of little ones to add to that purple uh, crumb that I'm trying to highlight in this block. And then once I've got that a little bit bigger, adding the next bigger piece again and again. So uh, by doing it in sections, that's how you can still use those teeny tiny small pieces. Um, because if you just built from a center and went out, then you would end up having to use larger and larger and larger pieces along the edge. But this way you can sort of um, build your sections out of smaller crumbs and then join them together, which gives it that kind of fun uh, patchworky piece to look. So that's me with my several sections there that I'm trying to go, how, how am I going to piece this together? Obviously at the end you'll trim the whole block as well, um, so don't worry about that sort of thing. But um, this is me just kind of figuring out how that jigsaw of a block is going to go together. And I've got two big sections that are finally going to get sewn together and pressed.
I hope you enjoyed that. So again, this is the finished block. Um, you'll notice that in the tutorial, I've not talked a lot about um, nesting seams or measuring bits of scrap or what your seam allowance should be or anything like that. Um, my personal philosophy with a lot of this stuff is that we spend far too much time trying to make everything perfect and then we just don't end up making as much as we'd like you know we end up getting you know unpicking things and whatever and life's too short so um i i do try to nest my seams when i can but um like there'll be some that are a bit wonk you know what i mean but like i'll iron that and then when this ends up in a quilt it's all going to get quilted down i've never had an issue where I've been looking at a finished quilt and gone, oh, I wish I'd spent more time nesting my seams or measuring perfect uh, quarter, uh, what's quarter, quarter inch seam allowance. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm, and I've never had a quilt pop open either. I'm just, if you're looking for all this kind of precise tips and things, you're probably in the wrong place. Uh, I just want to have fun sewing scraps and making things from things that normally get wasted. Um, so I do really like this. And to be honest, I didn't like clump, crumb quilting when I first did it because I ended up with stuff like this. And I was like, what am I going to use that for? I don't like how that looks. <laughs> so um, but from playing around and just making more and practicing, I kind of slowly evolved. Um, and now I've realized I like a I like a very distinct color story in my crumb quilting. So, um, but you don't you don't find out what you want if you what you like if you don't just keep sewing and trying things. So um, that's why I don't always stress about all of the quilting and sewing rules, and I just try stuff. And I suggest you too; it's fun. Um, but if so, if you like uh, tutorials like this uh, and you want to see more things to do with your scraps ways to upcycle fabric uh, and other bits, then do subscribe, uh, hit the bell for uh, notifications, like, give me a comment if you've made uh, a crumb block or a crumb piece of fabric. Um, what kind of colors do you like? Do you like the kind of crazy quilting that, that I, I don't like or just you hate this because it's far too organized looking? I'd love to hear. Um, okay, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.